Um, hey everybody, I thought I might uh, just do a quick little um, video on my hot bluing process. It uh, gets a lot of interest when people wonder why I hot blue my blades. And I'll say first, I, I enjoy hot bluing them. Number one, it's just a ton of fun to watch what happens. And number two, I would find it easier to come up with more reasons of uh, why I would not hot blue my Damascus blades. Imagine a, um, a gun barrel and consider that all your guns are hot blued. What would, what would your guns be like if they were just raw steel? That's what your Damascus is like um, to a degree if, if the oxides come off the, from the etching. So I hot blew them to protect the steel and when you etch, when you etch the um, when you etch the Damascus, you get to see the, the uh, you actually eat away the tool steel, which means you literally create highs and lows between the tool steel and the 15 and 20. Now when this knife comes out of the hot bluing, it's going to be 100% totally black. The bluing process doesn't know the difference between 15 and 20 or 1095. It doesn't know the difference between martensite or perlite. It's just it's basically bluing the iron in the steel, and it all just comes out black. And then since the 15 and 20 is actually taller than the tool steel because of the etching process, I then sand the bluing off of the 15 and 20, and that gives you your contrast. So anyway, this is a this is a fighter I'm about to blue, and this is just a, an assembly I made to, to lower it in the tank. Now I'm just going to walk on over. We're going to get right over there. This is a 10 inch tank. It's only 10 inches long, and in this I, um, I blew fittings and even short hunter type blades. I'll go from corner to corner. When I'm bluing bigger blades, we can see what's going on over here is my oxygen tank, or my oxygen tank, my propane tank, and I'm feeding a double burner. And this is a 20 inch tank. And this, these are my bluing salts, which are caustic as can be. You get a drip of that on your skin and it's like alien blood. I'm serious. And right now I'm up to about 265 degrees and I got to get it up there to 292 degrees which I will maintain um, within a degree or two for 30 minutes. And then once I get the blade in there, I'll, uh, we'll come back and I'll show the blade and what's going on with the bluing salts. And we'll take it from there. Okay, we're so back. On. Now here's a good little demonstration of sort of what's, what's going on in this bluing tank. As you'll see that it's starting to uh, very much boil and boil vigorously. And we're about at 200 and 260, 270, 285 degrees. Um, I need to probably back this down just a little bit. Okay, just a little bit. Now, if you remember back in uh, high school chemistry class, there was when we were di discussing the uh, the periodic table and and um, atomic weight and so forth. There was a term we used which is called specific gravity, and that's what we're dealing with here. Is basically imagine water boils at 212 degrees. Well, when I I literally add about 10 pounds of this, it's a specific bluing salt to the water uh, per gallon of water, which raises the weight of the the fluid dramatically and it doesn't and we have to um, get the proportion of salt to water such that this water will not boil it won't start to release the energy from the flame and turn the liquid into a vapor until 292 degrees now I have to maintain that boil at 292 degrees for 30 minutes well that means that over 30 minutes of boiling time of the water turning to vapor and leaving this solution, the proportion of salt to water is going to get greater, which means the boiling temperature is going to rise. We don't want that to happen. So what I have to do, literally minute by minute, for, third, for a half an hour, is re as the water is boiled off, I need to replace it. 
so that the, the uh, proportion of water to salt remains constant throughout the half hour, thus maintaining a 292 degree boiling temperature. I hope that makes sense to you. Now I'm going to stick the knife in here. Okay, I have placed my blade in the tank. I have it suspended. And quite honestly, for the most part, for the next, for the next half hour, it's really kind of boring. It's not worth a movie. I'm just, this is what I just sit and I look at that. I maintain, I watch my boiling temperature and I continually replace the water that's boiled off so the boiling temperature stays at exactly 292 degrees. Now I will say a couple things. Two things are important. One is the cleanliness of the steel. The steel must literally be almost what would um, qualify as surgically clean. There can't be a speck of gnat's breath on that steel or it could inhibit the bluing process. And number two is the water for the most part. Throughout the winter I collect five gallon buckets of snow and I melt snow and the only water I normally use in my bluing process for my water, for my the water I use to replace it is you'll see over here some five gallon buckets is melted snow. Um, other than that I had an accident here this year and I ended up I'll just say I, I accidentally contaminated a whole five gallon bucket of water so I went to the neighbors who happen to have a um, reverse osmosis system in their house and that's the water I'm currently using until until winter comes around again and I can collect myself some more snow. So for the next half hour, this, you'll know where to find me. I'll be back here in a little bit and I'll show you what the blade's well, like when we take it out. Just another uh, quick little video of what's going on here. We're about, uh, we're about 15 minutes in. And then we're going to do something else, which um, there's a couple other things we're going to do. Is After my 30 minutes, this is going to come out and it's literally going to get quenched in room temperature water to sort of set the bluing. Then I go into, um, over off on the side, I've got a big uh, tank of boiling water and I'm going to submerge the, the blade into boiling water which will um, ensure we, we dissolve off any of the residual salts. Then I go back into the cool, cool water to cool the blade off and then it gets submerged in a tank of water displacing oil. Um, it's a special oil to, that seeks into the tiniest bit of crevices anywhere that might possibly exist and displace any um, residual H2O that has found a place to lodge. And since um, this is deeply etched Damascus, it's, it's kind of important that I do that. I want to make sure that uh, I've got all of all of the water, all of the salts displaced, and that's what the water displacing oil is. What, that's what it accomplishes. And then I'm going to actually use some of that water displacing oil and I'm going to sand the bluing off of that 15 and 20. And um, it's going to be pretty dramatic. All right, hey, back here we are back. And you can see the blade now. Of course, there's some reflections going on here and there, but the blade is now 100% black. It has. Um, it has been hot blued. It has come out and got quenched in a kind of a room temperature water. Then I had to go into boiling water, um, clean off any residual bluing salts. Now I'm going to take it off of my uh, my gadget here, and it's going to get suspended in water displacing oil for a little bit. So then we're going to do some sanding and and expose that 15 and 20. View of my tube of water displacing oil. And I've got my knife suspended down in there, and that's where she's going to sit for a minute. Then we're going to pull it. Here's kind out. of a good view. You can see that that blade is black, 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 black. It is just black. Everything's black. Um, it's a little wet with the water displacing oil, but it's it's um, black in its in its entirety here. I'm going to take, I'm, there you go, I'm going to take some uh, little hardback and some 3000 grit 
paper and I'm going to sand the bluing off of the 15 and 20 and we're going to get our extreme Damascus contract. Contrast. Be right back. Alrighty, now look what we got going on. You can see that the down in the in the lower portions where the 1095 is, the tool steel is still black, 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 yet I've sanded off the uh, the bluing from the 15 and from the 15 and 20. And um, there's kind of a bit a little deal of what's going on and I'm gonna I'll do a video on this fighter and I'll explain what's going on there in that in that pattern. I created a streak down the center of the of the Damascus. But anyway, got a little bit more work to do and um, eventually what you can do, of course that once I load this up on YouTube it's there forever, but I would uh, invite everyone to whenever you see this go to AndersonForge.com and um, you can look and see this knife which will be um, displayed at least for a little while currently in the year 2012 on the Blade Show 2012 um, page that I have and you'll be able to see the completed knife. I'll back to sanding.